Uh, my name's Sebastian Dooley. I'm a senior fund manager at Principal Asset Management uh, with responsibility for our European Data Centre Fund. Uh, so we first invested in data centers in uh, around 2007 in the US markets. And then it was part of our diversified strategy. And it was for the outsized returns that you could uh, generate from investing in that asset class. What's interesting is as the asset class has evolved, more people are coming in. So those outsized returns are not quite as big as they used to be, but we're still really focused on continuing to grow our team and investing in the asset class. And a lot of that is coming down to a very interesting um, supply demand imbalance in the market. And we're seeing a huge amount of fundamental supply, uh, sorry, fundamental demand coming through. Um, a lot of that is off uh, cloud implementation by a lot of corporates, um, so a lot of uh, social media um, streaming, so Netflix and the like as, uh, such as that, and more recently AI. And that's sort of really been the big talk of the town uh, over the last 18 months. And especially when you're in Europe and in certain markets in the US and Asia, we're seeing a really interesting supply demand imbalance. And there's a lot of difficulty to source new stock, uh, to develop, to get power, uh, and to get the zoning and planning to be able to develop out. So nowadays we see a really interesting investment case based on that really strong growing demand, um, but slightly more muted or difficult to source supply. So nowadays, the returns are slightly better than other asset classes, given there's been a lot of rental growth in the sector over the last 18 months or so. Um, but where it's really interesting and why we see it as a really compelling investment case is that is on the base case. There is a lot of potential upside in the sector. Again, the aforementioned sort of strong demand and difficult to high barriers to entry to bring in new supply is leading to a lot of potential rental growth that can come through as well in the future which can lead in those upside scenarios to a really strong um, sort of out over um, performance. But also that downside case compared to other asset classes we see as being a lot more protected. And again, given the infrastructure nature and sort of data is the new utility, uh, it's difficult to move these facilities. And so your protection uh, is a lot stronger. Sustainability and ESG uh, alongside data centers is a very, very big topic in the industry. I mean, ultimately, when you step back, uh, the end users of all of these data centers are a lot of large corporates, big technology companies, and all of these groups have themselves very strong ESG criteria and very strong um, um, sort of demands on that side. So you find the biggest users of data centers are AWS, Google, Microsoft, and they are the largest off takers of renewable energy globally. So you're seeing from the tenant side a strong demand for ESG. It doesn't get around the fact that these assets use a lot of energy. So we spend a lot of time um, uh, ensuring that we're, we're working with our tenants where we can to make sure that through direct power purchasing agreements, um, securing sort of green energy, and then also seeing how we can um, sort of use any waste heat, for example, uh, to benefit the community and directly giving it to housing is difficult because you have to heat it up again. But for example, we have a scheme in the Netherlands where the plan will be to uh, sell the waste heat to farmers who use greenhouses and grow a lot of crop there. So again, it's um, beneficial for the community. The farmers can get heating for much cheaper, but then also they're no longer going to be reliant on gas to heat their premise. So it's a contentious topic, but with good management, um, you, you, can, you can sort of stay within good ESG practices and sustainability practices. And again, as I mentioned earlier, AI has become the big talking point recently. Uh, and in terms of um, how that actually impacts on the infrastructure, a lot of that is around the cooling. So in a data center, density is an important thing, how close you can get and how, how, how many computer servers you can get in a specific space. And the denser they get, the more heat they generate, so the more cooling that you need. So we are seeing a lot of new cooling technologies coming through, um, sort of rack to water, some evaporative cooling, other technologies such as that, which means that you can have much higher density within a data center. 
We have seen though that uh, in a number of cases, some of our older facilities are being quite well retrofitted to be able to handle these updated cooling systems. So, uh, and it's all to do with the life cycle of these assets. As you move through, make sure you're working with best in class operators uh, and partners to ensure that uh, you, you have sort of those new cooling technologies come in, which mean that you're um, sort of ready for the next, the next day. Maybe we can split this. Um, so firstly, on the development side, uh, the challenge is mostly around securing power, securing planning. And then if you're in the, uh, not in the best location, securing a tenant can become quite difficult. The reality for a lot of development though, is that it all happens once you've signed a lease. So actually by the time you're um, putting in a lot of capital and you're significantly committing to a facility, you've already de-risked it to quite a large extent. And again, working with the right partners, the right operators uh, who have the strong relationships with the tenants means that you can have a lot more confidence in making those initial investments. On the stabilized asset side, which is what we focus on a lot in Europe, you have to understand the dynamics of the market because again, there is a risk of these assets becoming stranded. Um, so we want to invest in markets where we see that really strong supply demand imbalance. And we know that the benefits to our tenants of spending money refitting these facilities, keeping them up to speed and, and sort of at a modern standard is um, lower than trying to go and find a new facility for the use of what we're doing. So that's how we manage. So here I would, I would really put the focus onto our partners. Um, so we really work with best in class groups and partner with best in class groups who we know are um, keeping up on all the current trends, keeping up on the requirements of the hyperscalers, the requirements of the uh, sort of uh, tenants within the industry so that we can make sure that as these new technologies come through, our facilities are being kept at an appropriate standard. And then when life cycle refreshes need to happen, uh, that's being done to the standard that's required um, to be able to sort of keep on top of the technological change. Um, but a lot of the technological change happens on the computer server side which is not really where we invest as a, as a real estate or infrastructure investor. We're investing much more on the physical infrastructure and that doesn't overly change. And I mentioned right at the beginning, other than the cooling that's coming through, um, but I mentioned right at the beginning, we invested in 2007 initially. I think it was actually two months before the first iPhone came out. Obviously technology has changed a huge amount over that time but fundamentally the assets that we're investing in haven't and they still re retain sort of the key fundamental features as they did back then. This is my first time at a conference in Luxembourg and it's been really great to come along and um, see this beautiful building and a really well organized event with a, a lot of really interesting participants from sort of across the investment spectrum. Uh, looking forward to coming back again next year.